Hi, this is Steve Michelotti of the Azure Government Engineering Team. I'm joined here today by Russ Williams, Cloud Solution Architect, working with many of our important government customers. And today we're going to be talking about Q&A Maker on Azure Government. Welcome, Russ. Thank you. So I just said we're going to be talking about Q&A Maker. So why don't we start out by you telling us what is Q&A Maker? Help us understand what this technology is. Sure. Yeah, actually, it's a pretty exciting technology. Uh, basically, you give Q&A Maker your documents, and it gives you back conversation. That okay. sounds sort of far-fetched and maybe a bit of a boast, but it's actually what happens. So what do we mean by conversation exactly? Is this like, should I think bots? How should I think about this? Yeah, it is a combination of uh, those kind of thoughts. So Q&A Maker is a, uh, a service, but in order to actuate this service, uh, you do need a bot in order to talk to it. Okay. So do I need to get a bunch of uh, machine learning experts from MIT in order to create this, or how do I go about doing this? Well, that's the wonderful thing about it. Uh, you'll see here uh, in a minute that uh, this portal that they have for uh, the Q&A maker makes it super simple to create these things. So it, it, you're not a um, machine learning expert or anything like that. You just kind of uh, click and follow the instructions there, and out pops this conversational uh, capability. Okay. Sounds super interesting. Uh, how do we get started making one of these things? Excellent. Let's uh, let's jump right into that. So the main menu uh, for this uh, portal is right up top here. And uh, you can create a knowledge base from here or look at the knowledge bases that you have. Uh, we're going to jump right into this and I'll start with uh, creating this knowledge base. All right. So I think I should think of a knowledge base as this is where we put our documents that we're going to have conversational AI over, if I'm relating this back to what you said in the beginning. That's exactly right. Okay, so cool. We're going to feed this documents, and it'll take those documents and turn them into a knowledge base. Great. Exactly right. Uh, so this is kind of nice. You come to this portal, and there's a step-by-step -step menu here. So uh, building this Q&A maker is going to be as simple as following uh, these instructions that you see here. And the first thing that we need to do is to create the backend services. I'll expand on that in a minute, but uh, I do that by uh, clicking the uh, Create Q&A service here. And so you'll notice that uh, when I click that, I I'm now leaving the Q&A Maker portal, and I'm headed over to the Azure Government portal. So I'm signing in there. And what's happening here is we're about ready to provision the backend services for Q&A Maker. Uh, and so I'm going to give it a name because uh, I'm not very creative. I'm just going to call this Plan A. Uh, then we'll pick a pricing tier. Uh, in Azure Government, there's one pricing tier. And uh, interesting to note here that uh, when we talk about uh, uh, documents and the transactions, this is just for the management layer. Okay. Right? We're going to have a runtime uh, that's totally separate from this. And uh, so this only refers to the things like authoring and updating and that kind of thing. Okay. So we have those. I'm going to pick a, a resource group. In fact, I'll just create a new one here. All right, uh, so we got a new uh, resource. I'm going to change the uh, location of this. I'm going to put this in uh, Virginia. Okay. Totally arbitrary. Uh, and now I'm down to uh, Azure uh, pricing tier. Now let me explain this. So I was mentioning that there are some back end services here, uh, two primary ones. There's going to be an app service, and that'll host the, the runtime for the QA maker. Uh, and then there's also Azure Search, and that's where the, the documents, the QA pairs, will actually go and be stored. So the data is stored and indexed in Azure Search. Uh, and what we're being asked to uh, about right here is to pick the number of indexes. And really, indexes are uh, synonymous with knowledge bases. So uh, most often you'll start with just one knowledge base. Okay. And you probably build a bunch of these things and that's all you ever have. But you might have a scenario where maybe multiple groups in your organization want to manage their knowledge bases by themselves. That might be an opportunity where you get uh, more than one knowledge base. And if that's the case, uh, you pick the number that you need. Makes sense. 15 is a ton. Makes sense. Okay. So pretty easy provisioning process here. Yep. So far, very easy. Okay. Uh, now we're down to this uh, app service. And so this is that compute that's going to host the runtime. And uh, we're making a little note here in this uh, blue box that uh, we're going to start off with uh, the S1 SKU. Okay. And uh, it's probably plenty enough for any bot that you'd build. If you need something else larger than that, you can make that decision later and change that. Uh, so we have the Azure Search, and we have the uh, app service to host the runtime. Uh, I will keep the uh, App Insights enabled. Uh, Q&A Maker does have uh, telemetry coming off of that, 
I want to capture that. Uh, app service, or, or sorry, app insights is the tool that we want to use uh, for that. So I've got it all filled out. Uh, I'll now hit uh, create. And we should be spinning up our backend services. And so while this is spinning, uh, let's go ahead and uh, maybe look at this uh, uh, graphically, hopefully make that uh, a little clearer. All right, so what I wanted to show you here is uh, these are the elements that really make up a Q&A maker. These are the pieces and parts. And so you can see at the top uh, in that blue area, that's that management portal that we were just in. And uh, it's exactly that. You're going to go to this management portal, and that's where you'll be doing uh, editing and updating and publishing, uh, things like that. The green box in the lower right, uh, that's what we are now provisioning, right? So that's the app service that's going to host the runtime. Uh, and it's also the uh, Q&A maker that's going to store the uh, Q&A pairs that we are going to feed this uh, in a little bit. One thing I really like about this is that seeing this diagram like this really drives home the fact that how seamlessly all these services work together on Azure government. You have App Service, you have Azure Search, you have App Insights, and of course, Q&A maker using all these things, and you get to have it all provisioned in nicely in your Azure government subscription. So I think that uh, is really good to see it like that. Yeah, absolutely right. It's probably one of the uh, uh, more interesting services that's kind of put together that way in a real yep. synergistic uh, fashion. Uh, so maybe the last thing to, to note here is uh, uh, the clients in the uh, lower left. Uh, so once we built this thing, it's kind of like potential energy. It's sitting around, but uh, it needs to be invoked. Okay. Uh, and it's invoked through messaging clients. That's how you speak to this. And so a messaging client could be SMS, uh, could be a web chat control, uh, a variety of things. But somebody, something needs to talk to uh, what we're about ready to create. That's what we're showing over in the uh, lower left. Okay, cool. All right, so we're back here in the portal. Uh, it looks like it's finished. Uh, so I'm just going to go to the resource. Uh, and I'm going to go up to uh, overview here. And I think I could spin up to the uh, resource group here and kind of show you what actually got created. That was that plan A resource group we saw. Yes, three. plan A. That's plan right. Two. Okay. <laughs> So you see, uh, these are the things that we were just talking about. That was the represented in the green that's, lower box. That's of exactly diagram. right. That's okay. right. So we see the app service here. We see Azure Search. We've got uh, App Insights. And of course, you got the app service plan, which is going to host the, the whole shooting match. Uh, so all, all good. Uh, so this is the back end then for uh, Q&A Maker. Uh, and now we'll head back over to the Q&A Maker portal, right? We're leaving the Azure government portal, returning to the Q&A Maker portal. All right, and so we're done with step one. one. All right, great. We're done. That's exactly right. Uh, so we're going to the second uh, step here. It's this funny refresh button here, but since that work was done uh, sort of outside this page, uh, you need to hit this refresh uh, so that the service that we just create shows up in here. So pretty simple. Just going to uh, click my uh, tenant here, grab the subscription. Uh, and, oh, hey, we've got a plan B. Let's hope we don't have right. to go there. So I'll pick uh, plan A. Uh, that's what we just uh, created. Uh, and now I'm going to choose the language. Uh, so I'm going to choose uh, English. And uh, actually, something interesting to note here is uh, for English, uh, we both get chit chat, which I'm going to talk about in a second, and we get the extraction. So I'm basically saying, I'm going to feed you English documents. That's what I'm about ready to do here. But uh, I could do one of 50 other languages. So a lot of languages supported here. Uh, and if I picked one of these, I'd basically be saying, I'm going to feed you one of these other languages, and I need you to create a, a knowledge base uh, that understands that uh, language. Yeah, that's hugely powerful. We talk about conversational AI. It's not just all about English. Absolutely. 50 languages. Right. Yes. All right. Yes, Great. exactly right. Okay, so I'm going to choose uh, English. Uh, roll down here. And uh, now I get to name my knowledge base. Again, since I'm not very creative, uh, we'll continue with plan A. Uh, and now we're going to uh, talk about populating the knowledge base. This is where I give it the documents that I want this knowledge base to have. Uh, so I'm going to turn on uh, this uh, multi-turn extraction. Uh, so let me uh, mention what this is uh, all about here. So uh, multi-turn. Uh, when we ingest these documents, uh, it's amazing, as, uh, you'll see here in, uh, in a minute, uh, the ingestion process is pretty amazing. And it can take in documents, for example, and it understands the hierarchy in the doc document, for example. And uh, it can turn that into uh, a uh, what's called a follow-up uh, prompt. And so it's multi-turn in the sense that I'll ask a question. You'll see this in a minute. Uh, I'll ask a question. And when it finds that uh, question, uh, if it's seen that hierarchy there, it will include 
uh, these follow-on prompts, uh, and uh, it will expand what I can do uh, in in response to that. So uh, I'm looking at the uh, the answer to that question, and I go, oh, okay, that's interesting, and yeah, I want that third option as a, a follow-on or a continuing okay. so uh, part I should of this think conversation. Think of multi-turn as the follow-on part of the continuing yes. conversation. Yes, yes, okay. uh, m- much better way of saying it. It's 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 a multi-step because uh, I'm going to get an answer that has other things that I could do after that, and so then it's a back and forth of this conversation, a uh, human talking to bot, bot uh, sending back a response with some alternatives, and then you can click those and on it goes, and so it's this back and forth. Okay. So I want that because uh, I have a document that does have structure in there, and um, uh, I'll just uh, answer this one here. Uh, oops. So this is the default answer text that you're Yeah, reading. so it, there are cases where uh, it will find categories that it didn't have a heading for. Okay. And so if it ever runs into one of those situations, I'm just telling it, please use this as the uh, caption for that. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and throw it uh, a URL. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab uh, a URL I have here for frequently asked questions. Very common for uh, folks who want to throw in frequently asked questions. Uh, and, and actually, uh, sort of interesting, if I jump out to the uh, uh, a new tab here, just show you what this document uh, looks like. Uh, you know, it's kind of random, right? It's um, uh, these uh, question and answers. Kind of amazing that this thing can just uh, munch through these and figure out where the question and answer pairs are. So these are arbitrary pages, and you'd be surprised at the different formats that it can ingest in order to get these uh, question and answer pairs. But this is kind of what we're uh, going to ingest here. Uh, and then I also have the opportunity to uh, upload local files. So I'll do that. And so the local file you're uploading is like the manual? Yes, that's okay. exactly right. So here I'll be uploading a, a manual, but it could be an Excel spreadsheet or it could be uh, something else that had FAQ. Something uh, with structure. Structure and structure, could be a PDF, uh, a lot of different formats here. Uh, but the key is it's local on my drive. And there wasn't a URL to something okay. uh, someplace. Uh, okay, great. So I've got uh, two documents uh, specified here, and then I also have the opportunity to specify uh, chit chat. Now, most people, when they see this for the first time, uh, it seems like it's sort of gratuitous, uh, especially when you pick witty, uh, but it's actually not. It's serving a, a real uh, useful function. It, it turns out that when people start to get used to a bot, they kind of fall back into the idioms that are normal in conversation. So they might say, thank you. Uh, after the bot's done something for them. Uh, if you don't provide for that, then it sort of breaks this conversation back and forth because it's just jarring saying, I didn't know what you, uh, I don't know what you mean. Uh, so this chit chat sort of smooths that over. Okay. Uh, and uh, so we'll be using uh, that as well. And now we're down and ready to create our knowledge base. Okay, so now that finished, and we have uh, have our knowledge base uh, created. So you can kind of see here now that uh, it has pulled in those various documents, and has pulled out the question and answer pairs, uh, and it's put it in this management uh, interface here, uh, where I can now edit it and do the various things that I want to do as an author uh, for this knowledge base. So that's amazing. So if I'm interpreting correctly, what I think I just saw is you gave it a couple sources. One was a web page, another was a Word document, and it actually churned through all that stuff and created these questions for you automatically. That's exactly okay. right. Okay, wow. Yep, that's right. Uh, so we have a number of things here. Uh, I'm going to kind of point out a few things uh, that are uh, of interest. Uh, the first one is uh, the question and answer pairs are, are actually marked down. Uh, so if you understand Markdown, uh, you'll feel right at home here. If you don't, it's an easy cheat sheet to get uh, off the internet. Markdown just being a simple format to help people write HTML without having to know HTML. Uh, that's right. And so I can make uh, very simple changes in here. So if I wanted to make this, for example, bold, uh, the Markdown syntax for that is uh, two stars here uh, for beginning it and two stars there at the end. Uh, I could uh, throw in some images, so I'll do that uh, very quickly here. Uh, just let me grab that image. I'll kind of throw it in. Uh, what the heck? Yeah, let's do a random wherever. Yeah, random wherever. Uh, and we'll throw this last one in uh, right over here. So we're building a manual on how to use a Microsoft Surface laptop. <laughs> That's exactly right. Okay. I'll throw this one in at the end. Uh, so I've made some edits uh, to this thing, and you'll do that. Uh, and once you're finished with the edits, 
uh, you'll do the save and train. Super important. Uh, this is how uh, those new changes then uh, get built into the knowledge base. So not only is it great that it generates it for us, but if there's something we don't like about it, we get to control and how we modify it. Yeah, that's really a good point. I think what you'll notice when you start to do this is the documents that you initially import were not created for a casual type of back and forth. Yep. They're very technical, so they tend to be super wordy. Okay. Uh, and so you'll need an interface like this to go in and massage them and turn them in uh, to something that makes more sense in a conversational format. You're probably going to shorten up the answers. Uh, and um, and also provide alternatives for the, the, the questions. Makes sense. All right, what's next? Okay, so uh, I've got that change in here. We have a handy little test pane uh, right here in the portal, so I can try this out right now. So I'm going to say, uh, what's the difference between 32 and 64? I'll let that rip. And there you go. Uh, I have the uh, answer that we just doctored up here. I see the bold writing right there. That's right. Uh, and so what's interesting here is uh, the question that I asked didn't exactly match uh, the question that was in uh, the knowledge base. And so that's our natural language processing. Uh, it doesn't have to match uh, exactly. And in fact, uh, the, the natural language processing that is uh, behind Q&A Maker is specifically made for uh, it, and it's pretty powerful. Uh, uh, let me jump over to the uh, PowerPoint and kind of show you what that uh, looks like. Uh, super powerful, as I was mentioning, with this natural language processing. So the reason I am able to be very flexible with the question I'm asking is because of the capabilities of this uh, ranker. So uh, as you can see here, I can reword things. Uh, it can be shorter or longer. Uh, we can use synonyms. Uh, so uh, a lot of things going on here, in addition to the fact that it takes into account both the question and the answer uh, when it's trying to make that match. Oh, so, I see. So it's more natural language stuff, like spelling mistakes, all that kind of stuff. That's right. Specifically made for Q&A Maker. Yep. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're back in the portal here. I can close down this little test tab here. And uh, we've made edits, so you'll be doing something similar to that, a variety of edits uh, using all the capabilities of the, uh, the portal here. And at, uh, when you're finished with that, it'll be time to publish it. So that'll be the next step that we'll do is uh, move over here to publish. And so what we were doing before uh, we were editing it, those edits couldn't be seen uh, by clients. Uh, Right? You don't want to half-bake. Uh, so you can do a variety of, uh, of edits in there, and when the time comes and you want to publish it, uh, you'll come to this Publishing tab. Pretty simple. Just hit uh, Publish. Okay, so uh, it's uh, completed here, and uh, you'll notice I, I have a number of uh, things on the screen here. Uh, kind of interesting, uh, you can take this snippet right here, paste it into PowerShell, uh, and it will call that endpoint that we created uh, straight away. So uh, kind of instructive, uh, what we actually did was create an endpoint. We took all those documents in, uh, it munged them together, created a knowledge base, and that knowledge base kind of sums up into an endpoint that can then be called by clients. And so if you wanted to exercise that yourself, you could either do it in Postman or Curl, okay. or of course writing a, 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 a RESTful application. Uh, but we want to create a bot to call this thing. And so uh, you could uh, fire up Visual Studio, grab the SDK, and go build the bot. Uh, but you don't really need to, because this button here will do that all for you. All right. So I'm going to click this for a web app bot. Uh, most of it's filled in here. Uh, so I'll just kind of uh, check it over. Uh, and the one thing it does need is my authoring key. And so you'll get that by uh, going back to the portal. Uh, and if I pull out in this uh, upper right-hand corner, just click kind of your initials, you'll see this profile. You go into the service settings here. And then you need to look up the uh, bot that you just created. Uh, you may have to refresh the page. And there's plan A. And so I will just go ahead and grab by hitting this copy here, uh, the key. I could do a, a little show on it. Uh, so it ends in 4604. Uh, and now I will uh, jump over into the uh, portal here. Oh, sorry. Uh, this one over here. Got too many pages open. So I jump back over into the portal here. And now I can just paste that in. Uh, 4604, that looks right. And so now uh, I'm about ready to go. Uh, quite often, you'll want to uh, create your own uh, app service here because it'll be connected to one that you probably don't want it. I'll just do that quickly here. 
I'll take the default names, that sounds good to me, uh, and I'll let it provision the, uh, the other things that it needs. So I'm just gonna click Create now. Okay, it's done. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this resource. And so we're still in the Azure government portal here, and I'm now looking at uh, the web app bot. And uh, it has also a test pane, very similar to the other portal, uh, but it's big difference here. This is a web app bot. And so as I test this, it's the web app bot now talking to the Q&A maker in order to get that answer. So it's sort of a broker uh, going through. Uh, so uh, with any luck at all, I uh, should be able to ask the same kind of question. Uh, where is my product key? And so it, it has done exactly uh, what I was saying there. So it's called uh, th this messaging client, called the endpoint from the Q&A maker, and got back that result and then showing on it. So this is a little test pane that is in uh, the Azure government portal. Uh, let's take a look at the channels. So channels are the ways that messaging clients talk to things. Uh, and as you see here, uh, we have a SMS channel. Uh, so that's one way in uh, to this bot, uh, or we have a web chat control. So if I just uh, drop down to this SMS channel, enabling one of these things is as simple as just configuring it. So I can have a chat with it via text message. Exactly. Uh, so if I fill this out and uh, uh, submit this, then uh, it, you could use your phone and okay. uh, you'd be talking to it. And the web chat bot is if I wanted to embed it in a web page. That, that's exactly right. And actually, that's a pretty common scenario. Uh, so if you have, say, a, a website, like a, some sort of line of business app, uh, you're going to want to integrate this bot uh, with that uh, with web app. It might be a home page, for example, that you want to throw this Q&A bot on. It's a very common scenario. Uh, and if you wanted to do that, uh, what that would look like is uh, you come to the web chat control, and you'll notice that uh, it's already configured. By default, uh, the web chat control is enabled. Uh, so in order to use it, uh, you simply hit this uh, Get Codes, you follow this link here, scroll down just a smidge, and here's the HTML snippet that you just paste in any old page. Could be running on-prem, doesn't really matter. Uh, uh, those are the codes to, to get it embedded. So I've grabbed those. Uh, I'm going to uh, sneak over to Visual Studio. Uh, I have a uh, very straightforward file new project uh, web app here, uh, which has a single page on it. And I'm just going to throw those codes uh, right in here. Okay, copy paste, simple as that. Copy paste, simple as that. Uh, I'll make one small alteration. I will change uh, this width here. 100 is a little bit too big, I think. So we'll just go to uh, 300. Uh, and I'm also gonna need to throw in uh, a key right here. So uh, something important to note, we'll do this for uh, just a demo. Uh, you never want to put your key in an HTML page and have that flowing to the client, but we'll do that here. Uh, in practice, you would put this in something like Key Vault uh, and protect that key, but we're going to take a shortcut here and do that. Uh, so let me go grab that key. I have to go back over to the portal, uh, and uh, the key is right here. So if I say Show, uh, triple click this thing, I can grab that key, go back over to Visual Studio, uh, and now I'll just very carefully replace that key, uh, and I should be able to run this app. Okay, let's do it. All right, so uh, here it is. Uh, so uh, notice this is running on local host, right? This is not up in Azure, not necessary. Just threw those codes in here. I'm going to go ahead and ask the very same question. Uh, oops, sorry. It's, uh, where's my uh, product key? And there you have it. So in both of those scenarios, it was totally uh, codeless. Whether I did SMS and enabled that, or just grabbed those codes and threw it in here, uh, I've created a bot uh, simply by feeding it uh, documents and then uh, pasting things around uh, with uh, no code at all. Very cool. So we have the, the full power of Q&A Maker with natural language processing and being able to create all that for us with all these services working together and this fully featured bot that we can now put in any web page or even send text messages to it. Pretty exciting. Okay, well, thank you for that whirlwind tour of the Q&A Maker. Uh, this has been Steve Michelotti with Russ Williams talking about running Q&A Maker on Azure Government. Thanks for watching.